Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement worth having. When I was seated near a particular property owned by a particular Green Street Realty, I was finding that my computer, despite having the VPN off and the internet off or the Wi-Fi off, my computer was being hacked by someone and literally my content was being deleted. Things that I worked really hard to script are gone. Because once you script it and you craft it in the impromptu way that God leads you in a sermon, you don't get the same concepts back. You see, God provides himself to all people, but all people try to pretend to be God in other people's lives. When you lie on someone's life, you lie before the Lord. You lie before God above all. God is omnipotent, God is omniscient, and God is, of course, omnipresent. You can look around you in the outside world and see that there was a God. Man did not create the grass, man did not create the earth, and man did not create the sun above or the moon overhead at night. Man did not create the squirrels that are heavenly to watch, and man did not create the birds that wake us up in the early morning to say, get up and get your earthworms on. What they're really communicating are the stories of old that we used to know when we cared about our land, when we cared about our environment, when we cared about what God thought of us in every way. Today, we have to ask you the question, who the fuck told you what? Now, it might be a surprise to you that a pagan priest would swear and curse like a sailor, as my old father used to say. My late father, that is. He's passed into the spirit world. But in your life, I want to ask you that. Who are you trusting with your life? Who are you trusting to represent your company? Who are you trusting to take care of your children when you step away for something, I don't know, a late night girls night out? Or something like that. Regardless of how old your children become, you still have to have a loved one who can be there for them if you're not available to be there for them. If they have an emergency and they can't reach you, there has to be someone that they can call. Now, if you've got a marvelous pastor in your church that you trust 110% with your children's gall, then that's marvelous. But if you don't, then maybe you've chosen the wrong passage. You've chosen the wrong way. You've chosen the wrong path. You've chosen the wrong journey in a church. Today's churches on college campuses are not flourishing at all. During my college heyday, they were not really flourishing, but they certainly were doing more than surviving. They were bringing in the wayward. They were bringing in the the difficult not at all they were bringing in the kids that are missing connection feeling the loneliness of the world now thankfully covid is starting to kind of play itself out just as i predicted that about the time that spring and summer rolls around we'll be back in our full lives still wearing our masks and keeping ourselves that mask stranger to people or having to remind people who we are because we've changed our hair we've changed our look we've changed our clothes we've changed the color of our mask and we're not reminding people of who we are by putting our names on our mask, which might be a new idea for someone who wants to create a new business of printing their names on a mask. We've certainly seen some people and some players with gruesome masks, but you have to wonder why they would want to do that. You see, how we present ourselves today is not exactly how we play in the world today. There are circumstances that are difficult. I can remember having the marvelous opportunity to do some training of Japanese language for a company that I worked as an independent contract for when I was slowly starting to move out of my business. It was a really rough time for me. I wasn't actually in my home at that time. I was living out of hotels at that time and I was totally having to structure my time. It was really hard for me to always be perfectly clean and when you walk in and out of places where you're freezing the one minute and hot the next, you better believe an old man's gonna sweat, like the Dickens. But my interest of that conversation was that the people who wanted to run that program wanted to teach a book that wouldn't teach anyone to really speak Japanese. So what I practically tried to do in the whopping two weeks that the executive who was going to travel to Japan was willing to provide me, and really it wasn't even two weeks. It might have been almost every day, but it was barely enough time to teach him anything. The truth is that I might not have played well in in front of that company, but no offense, but I'm the expert in teaching Japanese. What are you an expert in? Are you an expert in people? Are you an expert in love? Are you an expert in, I don't know, retail? Are you an expert in uh, real estate? Are you an expert in mortgage? Are you an expert in land development? What are you an expert in? Are you an expert in maintenance? Or are you just playing like you are? 
You see, I know how to build things out of wood. I know how to, to measure things. I know how to check the right kind of feeling of that wood. I don't always know whether the wood will be structured enough. We certainly need more engineers in the world to build solid buildings. But my point of talking about buildings that Jesus was a man who built as a carpenter. But let's look at what he really built. Well, he might have been employed during the day as a carpenter, as someone who built houses or repaired things or whatnot, or at least that's the story that we're told. That's what a child believes. It might have just been a metaphor for what he was doing. But what he was really doing was building a marvelment for God in the world. What he really was doing was traveling through the Middle East of what we understand now is the Middle Eastern world, and he was experiencing and exploring a lot of different religions, a lot of different people, and he was still performing his miraculous gifts on everywhere he went. He changed water into wine, he made the lepers of the day healed, and he openly rose the dead. And yet today, we don't believe he can still do anything like that, despite the fact that we like to watch those suspense thrillers, those investigation shows where they go through houses looking for ghosts or people who are lost souls who haven't quite crossed over yet and we also like those programs that like crossed over where we listen to Jonathan Edwards do his readings of people and then we just laugh and shout and say oh that's all bullshit and, and whatnot but the truth what I'm asking for you is really what I'm saying to you is who gives you the right to touch another human being's life 